Hello friends, welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you are new here. I am Martina Lilly and today I'm going to do a full face of Hourglass Cosmetics. I have a giant box of nearly every product <laughs> I could get my hands on from this brand. I've been testing it for about two and a half months, maybe a little bit less than that now. And I'm finally ready to do like my full face kind of review and thoughts on each product. So hopefully that sounds interesting to you guys. If it does, go ahead and do the youtube things like subscribe, hit that notification bell and let's get started. A full face of Hourglass. So I really have quite a few products from the brand and I really have been testing these out and I really know my thoughts on each one of these. So all of the products that I use today on my face will be linked in the description box down below for you guys. They are affiliate links so if you shop through them thank you so much. The first product I'm going to use is this Hourglass uh, I don't actually know what this is called, it doesn't have a name on it, but it's the new clicky lip pen things that they've got um, that are like really popular on socials and everything right now. Uh, this is the shade Rise right here and I will give you a wee swatch from the back of the hand. There you go. I really love the shade of this. It's very pretty. Now you can twist it up but you can't twist it down so just keep that in mind. It's kind of like the Mario Moisture Glows like that. So this little product is advertised as like a three in one product. So it's supposed to be like a lip balm, a kind of volumizing plumping lip product, as well as being like a glossy lip. Honestly, I feel like it meets all of those claims really, really well. I actually do use this quite often as a lip balm slash lip serum because I do find that like it really is quite nourishing on my lips. It doesn't dry them out or anything like that. It really adds that hydration, which I love. It does have a little tingle to it. It's a little bit like that minty cool feeling, but honestly, it is very very faint I mean everyone's sensitivity levels are gonna be different so keep that in mind but like for me it is a very 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 faint kind of like plumping feeling if you will it's not as much or as intense as say like the Mario moisture glows or like the Fenty ice or like heat balms glosses sorry and then I feel like you can tell it's very uh it is very glossy and shiny. My only con to this product, to be honest, is that it's not very long lasting. It really doesn't have a lot of like oomph behind its, its wear time. So you do need to kind of like reapply this quite continuously throughout the day. Um, but I will say it's a very fuss free, easy product. So if it's something that you just want to like throw in your handbag um, for say like all day at work or something like that and just pop on, you know, it's going to look really nice, really glossy, but also really hydrating at the same time, then it's it's probably worth a look in. I do think the Tarte Maracuja Juicy, Juicy Lips, sorry, for example, I do think they're a little bit more long lasting. However, I, I also like the shades of these a little bit more. So, it's a, you know, you do you. Keeping in mind, obviously, this is all very much my own opinion. <laughs> We're all different. Um, we all have different preferences, that kind of thing. So take it with a grain of salt. It's just a bit of makeup fun in my two cents. We're going to do eyes first. And I picked up the Hourglass Eye Primer Veil. And I've been testing this for a while. You guys have probably seen this in quite a few videos already. Um, and it does have a slight tint to it, like a ever so soft color to it. It's a pretty transparent on the eyes, I find. So I just like to apply it with my fingers and I kind of just like tap it in. It feels a bit like the Viseart eye primer, I would say. It's a bit of a like a slippery silicone-y almost type feeling to it. A little bit even like the Pat McGrath Labs eye primer, the Rare Beauty eye primer, but it's a little bit heftier feeling than those two primers. They feel quite thin, whereas this one does feel a little bit thicker. Not in a bad way at all, just a little bit thicker, but it does have a little bit more tack to it. I find like once it dries down, it has this lovely tack to it that really does like make the eyeshadow like grip to it. So I actually really like this. And once I've gone through it, I actually would consider repurchasing it because I have found that it really extends the wear time of my eyeshadow. So I really do enjoy that particular product from the brand. Now, this is the most ridiculous purchase I think I've ever made, period. <laughs> in makeup. It really is. I picked up like three eyeshadows because I was like, I'm going to do this full face. I have always been curious about these in the sense that they are so ridiculously overpriced in my personal opinion that I've always kind of wondered why. And I was like, if I'm going to do a full face, I really feel like for science sake, I need to pick some of these up and just try them to at least let you guys know what I think of them. It's definitely not something I ever would have just like gone out of my way to pick up if I wasn't doing like this full face review. So this is like the Hourglass Curator eyeshadows. I picked up three shades. So I picked up the palette packaging on its own and then I just picked like three of the individual shades and put them in myself and you can like pop them in and out of here. And I will say, I'll just pop one out for example. So I will insert swatches in a second. This is the matte shade Koi. And I will say, like, this pan 
is absolutely gorgeous. Like, absolutely gorgeous. It is thick, it is luxurious. I've never seen like a single eyeshadow pan come in this kind of casing before ever. Like, it is absolutely luxurious. However, <laughs> this shadow was like 45 Australian dollars. So for three shadows at $45 each, uh, and then plus the, I think it was $25 for the case, this cost me like $150, maybe even a little bit more than that, for three eyeshadows. Like that's more than Tom Ford, you guys, way more than Tom Ford. So yes, I am crazy. Yes, I'm ridiculous. No, I like, you do not need to do that. Okay. Absolutely not. Unless you're like super interested in it and want to pick them up. But like this was purely for science sakes. <laughs> okay. I will say though, the quality of the shadows is absolutely beautiful. It is. Is it that price beautiful? No, like you can get a Natasha Denona palette for like $100, get a lot more colors and they're just as good if not better. But it's not like it's the most terrible quality in the world. It just, you know, everyone's going to look at that value in that product differently in terms of their own, I guess, value of a dollar, if you will. So I'm going to quickly insert the swatches of these three shadows here for you guys and then we'll create an eye look with them. So the three shadows that I picked is Koi, which is kind of like, you know, a straight traditional transition shade matte for me. Ion, which is this beautiful like bronzy metallic. And then Fox, which is this gorgeous like champagne-y metallic. I had my husband with me and we were like swatching all the shadows and so he helped me pick these out. But I just wanted to pick three shadows that honestly, given the cost of these, I knew that I would get a lot of wear out of and like if I was traveling, it's like I could literally just throw these in my little travel bag and it's kind of all the colors you would need for the everyday. So I just wanted something that is really simple and just everyday friendly. And I also thought these are colors that like, for example, my mom would use if I wanted to like get this to her after I was kind of like done with it. So I'm going to take Koi, the matte shade here first with a Refa 27. And I'm just going to fluff this through the crease. I'm just going to keep the look nice and simple because it's more about like the quality of it. So I'll just fluff this through the crease and I will say like this matte is, it's really quite pigmented. Like it does remind me a bit of a, I want to say it actually reminds me more of like a Pat McGrath Labs matte than a Natasha Denona matte. So it definitely has some pigment to it, but I think you can kind of see it just, it doesn't blend as easy and fuss free as say what like a Natasha Denona matte, for example, would blend out like. So in terms of the $45 for this matte, I definitely do not agree. <laughs> that this is like a fair price point. Again, keep in mind, just my opinion, but it just, you know, you guys have seen me do, if you've been around here for a bit, you guys have seen me do a lot of eye looks and use a lot of eyeshadows. And you can always tell like just when the shadow blends in like two seconds, it just goes on and it blends. And this one, I think you can just tell it's just ever so slightly patchy and you just need to work a little bit harder and use like a really soft kind of touch with it to really just get it to blend out softly. Again, very much my own opinion. It's just that, and it's not like the worst matte formula I've ever used in the world. It's just, I wouldn't say it's overly beginner friendly and I wouldn't say it's worth it for the cost of it if I'm being really honest. Also, I should say none of this was PR or anything and the brand has not asked me to do this. This is all completely my own opinion, my own, you know, money was spent on these products, that kind of a thing. Yeah, I just, I don't know if you can tell on camera. Like if you're used to watching me do eyeshadows tutorials and stuff, I guess you can probably tell like it's just, it's 
it's just not as easy and fuss free. Now this is a little bit of a deeper transition shade than I would normally use, but still I've used like a black transition shade before from Pat McGrath Labs and it's, you know, still blended out super nice. So, although this color right here would make a really nice one and done for like deeper skin tones, I think. So for the metallics, I will not use Pat McGrath Labs Intensifies on this side, but I will use it on this side. So essentially this is, if you haven't seen it before, like a glitter glue, if you will. So I'll just put this over the lid on here. And I do this with every single look. Like I use my intensifiers every single day, regardless of what eyeshadow it is. But you know, it's up to you whether or not you use something like that. I just find it extends the wear time of my hooded eyeshadows, stops any potential fallout, that kind of a thing. So I'm gonna take a ref or two and we're gonna go into our eye on now. And I really quite like this shade. Honestly, the actual colors of these shadows are very pretty, very wearable. Like I really like them. I wouldn't say they're like the most impactful wowing metallic formula. I think they're probably just a nice metallic formula if you will. Very well suited if you have mature lids. I think you'll really like these. I definitely think the quality of the metallic shadows is much higher than the matte shadow that, at least the matte shadow that I have and the metallics that I have. These are really quite a beautiful formula to use and they look really lovely throughout the day. They wear really well throughout the day. They don't crease or anything like that. And I really quite like them. Now you will notice with the intensifiers, it definitely amps up the metallic a little bit. So I do like it in that respect. It means that like, if you want to kind of have more of a softer satiny kind of finish you can just use the shadow dry and then if you want to amp it up you can use like a glitter glue or wet your brush or something like that i quite like that it does amp up with that effect it's a straight down the line kind of bronzy shade there's nothing special to this in my personal opinion again you could just get a natasha dinner and say like i need a nude palette or something like that and the quality is a little bit better in my personal opinion but it's still lovely like i'm not hating on it it's just straight down the line nice um, now I will just take a little bit on my finger and just pop that over here just so you can see that too and it does just amp it up a little bit. I do like about these shadows though is they don't have a lot of fallout at all. Like if you're someone that likes to do your face first and then your eyes like you won't have a lot of issue with like fallout getting on your face and stuff with these which I, I do appreciate. So now I'm just going to take Fox right here. I'm just going to use the other side of that ref for two. I really like Fox. Fox is really gorgeous. You know it's quite a simple shade but it looks really quite stunning on the eyes in my opinion so I'll just pop that in this inner corner here and I like putting this one actually all over the lid but I'm just popping it on that inner corner for there I do really like Fox Fox is stunning like I said I really do like the metallics of these it's just the mattes a little bit average for my personal taste just going back into that refer 27 with that matte I'll just marry out here Now I also have one of the Hourglass Scattered Lights and I really love this product. This one is amazing. So this is Smoke and I've had this for a while and I think this is absolutely incredible. I really, really like this product from Hourglass because again, you can really like build it up and it's quite intense, but you can also do what I'm going to do. Pick some up on your finger and just lightly tap. And I don't know how much it will show on camera, but in real life it adds this beautiful little soft sparkle to the lid, which in certain lights, it just picks up and catches and looks absolutely stunning. And there are a lot of different shades, so you can get more intense ones, but this just adds this extra little oomph. But I also love using this with like, say, just putting um, even just my bronzer through the crease and all over the lid, and then I'll tap that over the lid and it just adds this kind of just beautiful, soft, like sparkly, like ethereal look. It's really pretty. So yeah, I don't know how much it's picking up on camera, but honestly, this is absolutely incredible. And I highly recommend these, like highly, 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 highly recommend these. I think they're phenomenal. I think I even might actually like this one more than I even like the Victoria Beckham cream shadows. I will say they're slightly different products in my mind. The Victoria Beckham ones are a lot more opaque, whereas these for me, well, at least this shade for me that I've tried is, is more of like a fairy dust, but I really love this. It just adds something to a look. And even on its own, it's just really stunning. Now, I also picked up the Micro Black Eyeliner. I wanted to pick up one of the new gel liners, but the shade that I specifically wanted, they didn't have. So I just got this little mini black eyeliner, which is absolutely tiny, but it's really good for tight lining and also just like smoking out across the lash line. So I will do that. so 
small you can like really wiggle it in between the lashes, it's really great. And then what I'm going to do is just run a little bit across here. And I'll just take a little pencil brush, this is just a Refa 3, and I'll just flick it to smoke it just a touch. And I actually really like this. It doesn't irritate my eyes. It doesn't give me that like weird cloudy type feeling that some eyeliners do. So I do actually really, really like this and I really like how small it is. So I would recommend this if you're looking at an hourglass eyeliner and you're wanting something that's like really, really small and you have sensitive eyes. Like I, I do really like this one. And then while we're here, I will just put my top lash mascara on. So I have tried the Caution mascara before from Hourglass and I really wasn't a fan of it. It kind of made my lashes look a little bit too spider leggy, which is not my vibe. So I don't like that particular mascara from the brand. However, I picked up this one, which is their new one, the Hourglass Instant Extensions Mascara. And I just got the mini size because I wasn't sure if I was gonna like this. And I really like this mascara. It is really, really beautiful and it is va voom on the lashes. So I'll put it on my top lashes on this side so you can compare. So that's with the mascara and without. And I just really like that it's kind of like a thickening, like volumizing, plumping kind of mascara. That's kind of my jam. I don't want something that's going to create too much length. I want more of like a, a thicker formula that's going to thicken my lashes. And I just find it's really lovely for that. And it doesn't flake throughout the day at all. It just stays put for me at least. And it doesn't irritate my eyes either. So this has been a major win. And uh, I would actually consider purchasing the full size of this truly. The other thing that I absolutely love about this mascara is that it is a tubing mascara, which if you are a tubing mascara, you usually go instantly a little bit higher on my faves list for me because I just love at the end of the day how a tubing mascara just comes off so easily and effortlessly for my sensitive eyes as well. So I love that this one is like extra va -vum, but also tubing. Let's move on to primers. So I have two primers. I have the Vanish Airbrush Primer, which I've had for quite some time. And then I also picked up a small one of this number 28 primer serum. And then I'm pretty certain they also have a Veil Primer, but I don't believe I can use that one because I think it has coconut in it from memory. And that's why it's like irritates my skin. I'm going to do half and half on my face. So I'll use the Vanish Airbrush Primer on this side of my face. And I'll just apply it with this Stellium Tools Kabuki brush. And my pump broke, so I just kind of need to do do this. <laughs> now, when I first tried this primer, I think it was like, whenever it first kind of came out, maybe a little bit later, I think it was like the start of last year, maybe. I did not like it at all. It was a primer. I really, like, I know everyone was raving about it on YouTube and everything. I saw so many people putting it in their favorites and everything for the year. And I just didn't understand the hype at all. I really didn't. It was, I just thought it was way too mattifying, but also didn't wear my pores at all. Yeah, I was just like, I don't get the hype of this. And this is a testament to like, you really need to test products for a considerable amount of time, especially I think personally primers are the biggest one for this to see the effects on the skin for them. But also, you know, skin types can change because my skin type over the past year has definitely changed. And I don't know if it's my skin type changing, my preferences changing, or maybe I just didn't give it a fair crack in the first place, but I'm now obsessed with this primer. I've honestly, I'm down to here with it, which you probably won't be able to see on camera, but I am. And once this is finished, I'm actually going to repurchase it instantly. This has become one of my favorite primers, true. I don't know why completely other than every single time I use this my foundation looks flawless truly it looks flawless and it wears flawlessly and I don't get as oily and it just I don't know it just creates like I will say it doesn't smooth my pores to the degree that like the Tarte pore smoothing primer does but it really does create this even like texture free kind of surface for my foundation I 
cannot stop using this. So one amazing thing from doing this video is me really getting my use out of that primer and falling head over heels in love with it. So yes, that one I highly recommend. I really, really do. Especially if you have combination skin, oily skin. Yeah, I was a hater and I've turned into a raving fan for it, truly. <laughs> now this one is the number 28 serum and this one is an interesting product. It's like, it's a clear kind of product and it's designed to kind of like add hydration and I guess be like a bit of like skincare but it also has this like really slippery like oily silicone feel to it it's really quite an interesting product and I've tried this quite a few times and I've got it on the brush if you're wondering it's nice um, I think if you have dry skin you'll pro like and I mean uber dry skin you'll probably really really love this because it is very very hydrating can you see the glow that this has given my skin See that? Whereas like this side is very mattified. Like I don't know if you can kind of tell this side's more mattified. Whereas this side, you know, has a lot more glow and like hydration. This feels like slippery and silicone-y. Whereas this is all completely dry down and I can't feel anything on my skin. So I think if you have dry skin, you'll really, really like this. And maybe like more mature skin. Like I could see my mum actually really liking this particular primer because it's going to add an extra level of like real hydration to her skin. If you have oily skin, I would actually recommend staying away from this primer completely. It's just going to slip off your face truly and your skin's probably going to feel a lot oilier from it. If you have combo skin, I would recommend just putting it on the outer perimeter of your face if it's something that you really want to try. Or like if you are going to put it over your whole face like I just did for the sake of this video, I'd really make sure you set with powder, especially through your T-zone, because it really does kind of stay a little bit like extra, I want to say greasy. It, it, it feels greasy, honestly, not in a bad way. And like I said, for a lot of dry skin people and normal skin, like it, that'll feel quite lovely. But for me, with my combination skin, it's a little bit too much. But it's not a primer. I don't absolutely hate it. It's just not like, like the Vanish one, I'm like, oh, this is proper rave worthy. Whereas that one, I'm like, eh, it's okay. Now, from my knowledge, Hourglass doesn't have a color corrector. I'm going to mix the rare and then Natasha Denona on my under eyes. I'm also going to put my Tarte green color corrector on my cheeks. I do that every single day regardless of the product. So to keep it fair and consistent for the review, that's what we will do. Now I have three foundations from Hourglass. I have the Hydrating Skin Tint, which is this one right here. And I picked this up in the shade two. Now I've tested this for quite a while and there will be videos as well on my channel. So any video that I've done this year where I've been using these products, I will link it in the description box as well for you guys so that you can just check it out and see. This is the swatch of shade two for you. It's a really lovely shade match and it, because it blends out to be so sheer, it really does turn quite lovely on my skin in terms of shade. I quite like this skin tint. If you are someone that likes a really, really light coverage, like basically no coverage almost, but just very, a little bit of evening on the skin, then you'll probably really quite like this skin tint because that's what it does. It just, it, it's super, super light coverage. You really can't build it up or anything, but it feels very, very lightweight on the skin. And also does really wear well throughout the day. Like it makes your skin look nice throughout the day. It doesn't like get cakey or heavy. It doesn't like wear away awkwardly, that kind of a thing. It's not crazy long wearing. Like, you know, it is a skin tint. And like I said, it really doesn't offer any coverage really at all. Like if I was to use this today, given that I've just got like a recovering breakout here and stuff, I would need to like really use, you know, spot conceal and that kind of stuff. But you know, if you are someone that loves a good skin tint and a tinted moisturizer, you know, and you're eyeing this off, I really do like it. It's definitely one of the better ones I have tried in my time. Like it takes a lot for me to just even be half impressed with a skin tint, to be honest with you, because I'm really not that kind of a makeup wearer. I really do like this and I use it more often than you would think. Now this one is the Ambient Soft Glow Foundation. And this one, you know, has had its moments on YouTube as well. You know, um, I think it was a lot of people's favorite and I was really curious about it. So I picked it up 
up. I got the shade 3, which is this one right here. And it's not a bad shade. It matches pretty well, to be honest with you. It's probably a touch yellow for my undertone and maybe ever so slightly a touch light. But, it, you know, I can make it work really well. I wouldn't pick a different shade, for example. In terms of this foundation, it's my least favorite out of the three that I have from Hourglass. I actually like mixing these two together the most because this one is very mattifying on the skin. And I just find it's, like, too mattifying even for my combination skin. It just looks really dry and heavy and cakey on my skin. It's full coverage. Like, if you want to wanting that full coverage you'll love it. If you have really, really oily skin, I think you'll really like it. But for me, it just looks too heavy and cakey. It settles in my fine lines. It just looks a bit too much for my skin. Like my skin just can't kind of take the thickness of this particular foundation, if you will. But when I mix these together and do a pump of this and a pump of this, it, because this is so hydrating, it offsets this in such a beautiful way. And then that's when I can like get a really beautiful finish to the skin. So yeah, I, I personally wouldn't repurchase this. And I really don't recommend this, honestly, unless you have like super duper oily skin. But if you're still tempted by this, I would recommend getting a tester if you can first to try it. Because yeah, it just... It was not a hit for me, this one. And I will link a video down below where I've used that foundation. Now this one is the Hourglass Vanish Stick. I have the shade Shell. And this is actually my favorite foundation from Hourglass. And I've actually had like two of these before in my time, like way back in the day when they kind of first got released. So that is Shell. And it's probably maybe just a hair too dark for me, but I can really make it work. And honestly, that's the one thing I find is like Hourglass shade range is a little bit awkward for me. I'm kind of like in between like all of the shades really. I kind of need to like buy two shades of everything to make my, my perfect shade, but I can make this one work. Now, as I mentioned, I've actually had this particular product, like I've had two of them before, like years ago, and I stopped getting it because I got caught up in other new releases and stuff like that. And I really got excited to kind of have this back in my collection for this video. Now I'm just gonna draw it all over my face. And then I like to take my Ray Morris Mini Radiance foundation brush and just kind of blend it out with this one. It definitely blends out better with a brush than a sponge for me. Now, this particular foundation, I think if you have really dry skin or dry patches on the skin, you either really want to hydrate your face or maybe just stay away from it because it can cling to dry patches a little bit if you're not careful. But just if you like really use like a hydrating base, then you'll be completely fine, at least in my experience. But the thing that I love about this particular product is one is it wears really well throughout the day. It doesn't settle in my fine lines or anything like that. It doesn't wear away awkwardly. It just kind of stays put. But I mean, I have to set my face with powder, but that's like, I would do that regardless of any particular product. Like even a tinted moisturizer, I have to set with powder. It's just how my skin is. But I just find yet yeah, that this is like really quite smoothing and lovely through my T-zone and it wears super well, but I can also tailor the coverage for this. So because it's a stick, I can really control how much product I put on. And if I want to like build it up in certain areas, it's really easy for me to do that. And then like really easy for me to like shear it out in other areas, that kind of a thing. So I personally love that about it. I also love that it does have like just a subtle glow to it, just ever so subtle, but it's not like a texture enhancing glow. I really like that about it. Now you can build this up to be really, really full coverage or really, really sheer, which I think is awesome and very, very versatile. I do like a stick foundation in the sense that they're just so easy and fuss free, especially if you like are someone that does your makeup on the go and that kind of a thing. I think if you have really, really oily skin, I don't think you would like this. I think it would probably get super oily, super fast on you. I could be wrong about that. So if you have super oily skin, let us know in the comments, like if you've tried this, but I could see like if you had super oily skin, really, really needing to like set your face and maybe even touch up throughout the day. But I find I can just put powder on in the morning like normal. And then this just kind of sets and forgets for the day. Depending on the amount of product that you put on your face, if you kind of shear this out, it looks your skin but better. And then if you build it up a little bit more, it does look like you have foundation on. So it's not like a incredibly natural fuller coverage kind of foundation like you do look like you're wearing product but it doesn't look heavy or cakey at least from my personal experience it doesn't but that's where I like to kind of keep the areas of the face where I don't need a lot of coverage sheared out a little bit and then I build up in the areas where I need a little bit more coverage and then that's how I kind of get a more natural finish while still getting like 
the higher coverage where I need it. Time for concealer. So I have Airbrush Vanish Concealer as well. And I have the shade Cream. It is too light for me on its own. I can get away with it though. But again, I just found with the concealers, I found the shade range really, really hard. So this is Cream. I found it that the shades were either way too light, kind of like this one, or way too dark, or like really, really the wrong undertone. When I first started doing my YouTube channel again in 2020, so I had taken a year off and I started reviews again in 2020, this was actually one of the first videos I did was a review of this concealer. I really was just never super faced by this. Like everyone at the time on YouTube was like, oh my gosh, it's so full coverage, it's amazing, da 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 da. And like, I just don't find it to be as full a coverage as like, what others do in saying that I think I have a very high expectation of what full coverage is because my under eyes do have darkness and pigmentation and stuff like that so you know you really got to work as a concealer for me to cover them the other thing that I don't like about this concealer is its finish on its own this on its own is just it's too matte for my under eyes my under eyes are incredibly dry and so I just find that this wears really crepey throughout the day because it just kind of gets drier and drier on my under eyes so if you're someone that likes a more matte concealer on the under eyes I think you'll probably really like this but on its own for me it is not it it really does not make my under eyes look good but I'm actually going to show you today how I like to use this concealer and how I've actually like this concoction for me is gorgeous absolutely gorgeous so I actually like to mix my hourglass concealer with my Givenchy concealer the prism libre one you don't need to do this whatsoever you really do not but what I like to do is show you guys how I can make products that I don't really like work for me in case you're in a similar position so if you've purchased this and you can't return it like we can't return makeup here in Australia then you want to try and make it work for you right because you don't want to lose your money so the way that I found it make it work for me is like add it with a really hydrating creamy concealer and then together they have this awesome little baby so I I have the shade N95 in this Givenchy concealer, which is a good shade because it's a little bit deeper. So it mixes really well with the shade of the Hourglass one. And I love this Givenchy concealer. I think it's absolutely beautiful on the under eyes. The finish is so lovely and smoothing, but it doesn't have quite enough coverage for me. So that's where this Hourglass really comes in and makes this kind of the perfect concoction because... The Hourglass is going to add that little extra oomph of coverage that I'm looking for. The creaminess and the hydratingness of the Givenchy concealer is going to offset that kind of drying to matte feeling for me from the Hourglass concealer. So I'm just going to tap this out with that Ray Morris mini radiance brush. So that is the concealer all applied and blended out. And I don't know if you can tell, I just personally think it looks so lovely because like I said, the Givenchy is adding that like plump and juiced upness where the Hourglass is just adding this like nice level of additional coverage to it. And my under eyes look smooth and just really healthy. So yeah, I don't know. Hopefully it's translating to camera. It's 4K, no filters. But I really like that combination together. So if you're like me and you find the Hourglass one on its own just too drying, if you have a more hydrating one in your collection, mix them together and see how it goes for you. Hourglass doesn't have a cream bronzer from my knowledge, so we will skip that step, even though I normally do it. Let's move on to powder. So I picked up two powders. I got the mini veil translucent setting powder and then I also picked up one of these ambient powders as well to try out so I have tested the ambient one on and off throughout the years you know I've had some of those like palettes that they release at Christmas time and that before and like my mum loves and adores this particular powder like she's gone through that many of them but for me personally I think this is kind of like a nice finishing powder but for me right now with my combo oily skin it's really it's not got enough heft to it to really set my face and actually make my makeup last or anything and it doesn't really like smooth and blur my face like I personally like my powders to do so I like to take the hourglass veil setting powder first I'm gonna take it on I actually have the hourglass like veil jewel ended powder brush and I actually really like this brush like highly recommend the brush and I'm just going to take the small end first and I'll use this to set my under eyes and then I will switch to the big end and 
use that on the rest of my face. It's not my favorite powder for my under eyes, but it, you know, it works just fine. It's still quite lovely. I just prefer my Make powder and my Bobbi Brown powder still for my under eyes, but I think you can tell like it has smoothed them out quite lovely and added just a touch of coverage to it because it does have like a slight tint to it, which I do really like about it. And they have actually increased their shade range to include deeper skin tones with this powder now, which is brilliant. So there should hopefully be a shade for you. It does wear quite nicely, I will say, this powder on the under eyes, actually. I'm probably being a bit harsh on it. It's just that I really do love my Make and Bobbi Brown concoction that I've got. And then all I do is just take the big end now and set it with the rest of the face. Now, if you have oily skin, basically, I would personally probably more so take it on a powder puff and really push the powder in and set it and forget it. And it's going to last a lot longer. And then basically, like, the drier skin you have... Is like where you use less powder, right? If you have dry skin though, I'd recommend the ambient powder, which we'll get to in a second. But if you have combination oily skin, this really does set the face quite lovely. It's probably not the most heavy duty setting powder I've ever tried in my life. It's not as heavy duty as say the Laura Mercier Ultra Blur powder, uh, like where, you know, that really does set and forget. I think this still kind of keeps a little bit of hydration in the skin. I do find I need to like touch up throughout the day when I use this powder because it just doesn't kind of like set it and forget it like other powders do. Like I still have nice healthy sheen to the skin so yeah if you're someone that doesn't want like a full mattifying powder then it's a really nice option. Is it something that sticks in my mind to like instantly repurchase if I ran out of it? Probably not to be honest with you. It's not that it's bad it's just for me personally every time I've used it it hasn't wowed me enough to be like oh yeah I really want to repurchase this compared to like a lot of the other powders in my collection but again I think if you have mature skin as well and you're looking for a loose setting powder I think you will really like this because it is a nice loose powder I could see for like a more mature skin type where you can just really lightly dust it over the face but as I said, if you have a drier skin type as well, regardless of age, I do think you'll probably really like this one. And if you're someone that likes a bit of a more of a glow to the skin, then you'll really like this ambient one. For me, it's a nice like little finishing powder, but like it's really not a must have for me. Like to be honest with you, once I've done this review, I'll probably just give this powder to my mum because I know she loves it. It's not something that I'm going to get a lot of use out of. It just adds a little bit too much glow and texture personally for me. And on the under eyes, it doesn't add enough like um for like coverage to them like what the veil powder does i'd rather set my under eyes with the veil powder so yeah i can see how this is for some people especially if you're like a more natural makeup wearer as well and you don't really like a lot of product that's probably a controversial take on that powder to be fair because i feel like a lot of people really love that ambient powder in particular but yeah it's just doesn't wow me. What I want to do now actually is bronzer. So I picked up the Ambient Lighting Bronzer in Nude Bronze Light and this is an incredible product. Gosh, do I highly recommend their bronzers. Their bronzers are impeccable. The finish on the skin, these leaves, so soft and blurring and ethereal and they are stunning. Absolutely stunning. So I'm going to take this on my Pat McGrath Labs bronzer brush and I just kind of like pick some of this up and you can get these in mini sizes too if you just want to like try them out first before you kind of like pick any of the big sizes up you guys have been telling me too that the hourglass bronzers are impeccable and yeah you're incredibly right like look at this look how natural and just seamless it is it's absolutely stunning it reminds me a lot actually of the Tom Ford bronzer as well see it's just oh it's so natural blurring Oh, it's gorgeous. This bronzer is like such a recommend for me, like out of pretty much out of anything actually as I'm looking around looking at products. This is definitely like in my top three recommendations from this brand. It is absolutely impeccable, this bronzer. Like I feel like just you, you seeing it on the screen is hopefully selling itself, if you will. Let's go ahead and do brows now. So I picked up the clear arch brow gel and then also the soft brunette brow volumizing fiber gel and then also the arch really thin brow pencil and soft brunette. So how I like to use these is I take the soft brunette brow gel first and use that to kind of like plump my brows up and kind of set the shape a little bit. And I really like this product. I really, really do. I actually would repurchase it. It's probably not as, I want to say thick as what the Benefit Gimme Brow is. But I actually think I like this one better because it doesn't add too much product. Like it's really quite natural and it feathers, like this little wand feathers the brows up in such a beautiful way. So yeah, I actually will repurchase this when I go through it. And then this is a little brow pencil. It is so thin and fine. 
it's just absolutely tiny and then I'll give you a little shade swatch so that's the shade right there this isn't my favorite I think if you're someone that likes to do like hair strokes then get yourself this brow pencil you will really like it but for me I like just kind of a benefit goof proof if you will just because I don't like to do hair strokes I kind of just like to flick it through my hair and then be done with it whereas I need to be a lot more precise with this one but I will say if you are someone that likes to do the little hair strokes and everything, this is really good because it's so small. It puts down such a nice level of pigment where it's like not too pigmented where you kind of feel a little bit intimidated. Like, you know, the Victoria Beckham brow blade. I actually really like that, but I had to get used to it because it's so pigmented. I had to get used to how to use it. Whereas with this one, it's just a nice level of pigmentation where you don't feel intimidated and you feel like, you know, you're not going to like screw it up too much if you accidentally make a mistake. And then if you do like to do those hair strokes, then, you know, it's so fine and like small, it's like perfect for that. And it wears really well. All right, we'll just pretend that they look like cousins, shall we? And then this is the clear brow gel, which I quite like. So I actually like to take this short side first and like run that through the brows to like really push the product in and push the hairs up. And then I flip it to the like fluffy side and then use that to kind of like really feather the brows. I like using it like that. I wouldn't say it's like the strongest clear brow gel I've ever tried, but in saying that, I have these ridiculously strong brow hairs. So that could just be my brow hair, but I don't mind it. Like I really like the finish that it has on the brows and the way that it pushes the hair up and just kind of like fluffs them out a little bit. These two gels from Hourglass, I honestly will repurchase. I won't repurchase the brow pencil. It's just too thin for like my personal preference, unless my preference has changed and I like go back to like a thin kind of pencil like this. I'm just gonna fix this bit right here where I smashed my head into a table. <laughs> um, but yeah, that is the, that's the Hourglass Brow Pencils. So I'm just gonna use the matte shade now and run that underneath my lower lash line to finish the eyes. Pop that in the inner corner and put a little mascara on and then we'll be done with the eyes. eyes are all finished. I feel like you can see, right? They look beautiful, at least in my personal opinion. I actually don't have a highlighter from Hourglass because I couldn't find one in stock in Australia or anywhere really to get one. So we're going to skip highlighter completely because I feel like I have enough of a glow. I did, however, pick up one of the Vanish Cream blushes. I picked up Loyal and I believe you guys have seen me use this in other videos and I love this, especially the shade. So this is the shade Loyal in the cream blushes. I mean, that's a very, very me shade, right? Like very me. But I absolutely love this. So much so I want to pick up more shades. I don't know why more people don't talk about this. Like why do people not talk about the Hourglass cream blushes? Is it because they're just older and like there's, they're not new to the market? Is that why people aren't talking about them? Like what is it? Because this is phenomenal, truly. So I'm just going to pick this up on a Refa 4 brush. So I just kind of like stamp the product off the back of my hand into the brush. Now I've already set my face as you've seen and this product goes really well over a set face, you know, under powder, whatever it is that you want to use it. I love it. It's not a glowy cream blush. It's definitely more of like a soft blurring, more not matte, but like soft matte is probably how I would describe it. But look at that. Isn't that stunning? Absolutely stunning. The shade is gorgeous. It's so long wearing. Oh, I love these cream blushes and I don't know, I have not heard a single person talk about these cream blushes, maybe since they've been released. And to be honest with you, I don't even think I remember seeing a lot of people talk about these even when they did get released. But is that not stunning? Like, it is so natural and blurring and thin on the skin. Like, I don't get why more people don't talk about these. Am I missing something? Please tell me if I'm missing something. But honestly, I love these. I definitely want to pick up other shades in the future. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. And I'm stoked with the shade that I got because it's one of those shades that I will use really quite a lot because it goes with kind of like every makeup look. Now another star product from this brand that I have fallen absolutely in love with and you guys have been telling me about for a while that I completely agree with you, the powder blushes. So this is the Ambient Lighting Blush in Dim Infusion. Kind of like a pinky corally type shade and it's gorgeous. 
gorgeous it is so light and ethereal on the cheeks it's perfectly buildable it has this beautiful like ambient finish if you will it's such a gorgeous blush it's so easy to apply it has a little bit of a sheen to it but not a texture enhancing sheen it's more just like a healthy kind of glow and like it's absolutely beautiful it really really is like it is such a gorgeous natural blush and I highly recommend it again another product that I would absolutely love to pick up more shades of this blush I think just the absolute wear of it on the skin it's so natural looking and yeah I just think any skin type will really really love these blushes I really do I highly recommend them they thoroughly impressed me let's set this face I picked up the Veil Soft Focus setting spray and the mister on this is so fine it is so fine that like if you've been around here you know I normally like to spray my setting sprays onto my sponge and then use that to like really push into my skin I just find that works better for my combo skin but this mister is so fine I just need to spray it directly on my face and I gotta say this has impressed me as well. Setting sprays are always this really awkward product where I really never know how to like properly describe why I like them. They're just one of these like little magic potions that work really well or they don't. And like I really love them or I don't. And this is one of those products where I just really like it. See how it's like melted all of the products into my skin and made them just look super duper natural. But it really does also extend the wear time of my makeup. Like it doesn't, I don't know how to describe it again. I still probably like the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Setting Spray a little bit more. I think that does a little bit more in terms of longevity for the makeup. But this is still absolutely beautiful. Like I will repurchase this when I use it up. I really like it. Now we've got lip. So I picked up one of the new lip liners from Hourglass. I got the Expose shade, which is very much a me shade. It's just very kind of like nude. It's a bit warmer than, say, Charlotte Tilbury Iconic Nude. Think of it like that. And I really like this product. It's absolutely lovely. It is creamy. It wears well. It doesn't bleed. It's long wearing. It doesn't tug on the lips. It's easy to apply. So yeah, I, I really enjoy this product. I wouldn't say it's like this groundbreaking lip liner in the sense of like the Charlotte Tilbury lip liners are impeccable, the Dior ones are impeccable, the Lisa Aldridge ones are impeccable, but it's up there with them. Do you know what I mean? It's impeccable along with them. So if you're interested in trying them, you know, go for it. I think you'll really like it. I have three lipsticks from Hourglass. Two of them you've seen quite a lot. Two of them are the Satin Unlocked. So I have one in Tide. So this is the Satin Unlocked, sorry, with the shiny packaging and you have a little H at the top, which I think is so cute. I have Tide and Oasis from them and I love these lipsticks. I think they are absolutely flawless. I cannot tell you one fault with these lipsticks. So this one right here is Tide and this is Oasis. I love them. Yes, I have a type, okay? I have a shade type. These are a satin lipstick. They're easy to apply. They're comfortable to wear all day. They don't dry out the lips, but they also don't like smudge around the face or anything like that. They're pretty decently like long wearing considering they're a satin lipstick. You need to reapply them, but they do pretty well. And I just love them. Honestly, they smooth the lips in a really nice way. I really think they're a high quality lip product. I believe I have even like a reel or a short on my channel where I lip swatch these, but I've included these in that many videos. It's like even top 10 favorite lipsticks, all that kind of stuff. I really love and stand by these lipsticks. I also picked up one of the new matte ones. So this is the Unlocked Matte or Soft Matte lipstick. So I got the shade Magnolia and this is more of like a peachy nude. So I tried to get something a little different to my normal and believe it or not, this is different to my normal. So it's a bit more peachy. So let's go ahead and apply this one today because this is like the newer formula to the brand. Now I will say the shade for me is like, it's not my fave shade. It's a little bit too light and peachy for me personally. I definitely like Oasis and Tide more. But shade aside though, formula wise, if you're into a matte lipstick and you don't want like a full, full matte, you do want like a softer version of a matte, then you'll really like this. I don't like a matte lipstick really, to be honest with you. I really don't. I'm really a satin lipstick person. So for me, this is like nowhere near on the level of love for what I have for the satin lipsticks from Hourglass. You can definitely see like more of my lip wrinkles and everything like that with this. It's not terrible, don't get me wrong, but it's definitely a matte formula in that sense. You know what I mean? It enhances the texture. It's longer wearing than the satin 
satin ones because it is that more matte formula but it's also not as comfortable of like a wear as what the satin ones are because it's that matte so this is where it's really going to come down to personal preference some people really really love a matte lipstick and then there's others like me who are like get away from me I just want a satin lipstick so I think depending on your preference like if you do like a matte I do think this is a really lovely matte lipstick but for me the holy grail is absolutely these satin lipsticks they are impeccable like impeccable 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 now I also picked up one of the glosses so this is in the shade Sublime or Unreal. Sorry, I think it's the Sublime Gloss in the shade Unreal. And it's like this gorgeous nude. I love the shade. Absolutely stunning. And I really like this gloss. Again, why don't people talk about these glosses? I just think this gloss is such a gorgeous nudie type shade and it is a gloss it feels a little bit stickier and thicker on the lips than say like what a lip oil would for example but it is a gloss it's a proper gloss and it looks you know glossy and lovely it has a little bit more pigment to it but it's still really hydrating and lovely to wear and like I will say even for it being a true gloss like I don't feel like my hair is gonna go across my face and it's gonna like stick to everything and all that kind of stuff like it's still a really nice wearable lovely everyday gloss I love the shade of it and I really really like it like I really like this gloss I don't know why more people don't talk about it again is it because they're an older product I don't know but I personally think this is lovely now if you're comparing these two right here so this one and this one I'll swatch them both as well for you it's just gonna depend on the finish and like I guess what you're looking for because this kind of like stick one right here is more of like think of it like a lip balm that is gonna be glossy and a little volumizing but it really is more of like a lip balm type feeling you're gonna need to reapply it a lot more than you would this gloss whereas the gloss is a lot more opaque so that's the gloss and then that's the rise like balm thing and then this is in unreal so if you want something that's a lot sheerer and more hydrating on the lips, then definitely go for this one. If you want like a true gloss that's got a bit more pigment to it, then definitely go for this one. I do like both of them. I really do. But if you said to me, okay, you can only have one of these, I'd actually pick the gloss just because it has a little bit more wear time to it. And I have lip balms. Do you know what I mean? Like this wouldn't be my absolute go-to lip balm for just like intense hydration of a lip balm. It's actually all of my hourglass products now. Let me go ahead and like do jewelry and uh, all that jazz and we will zoom out and wrap this up. All right, my friends, this is the finished look. What do you guys think? A full face of hourglass cosmetics. So what are my thoughts overall on the brand? I think the brand overall is really lovely. It has a lovely aesthetic to it. I think each of the products that they kind of release for the brand, they all seem to make sense in conjunction with each other, in my personal opinion, also all just my personal opinion. I don't really think there's any products that I'm like, these are absolutely terrible because even for example, I don't really like the ambient lighting powder, but I know that that is a cult favorite for a lot of people. So it's just not for me. Like each of the products I personally think perform really well. There's just some products that I'm like, nah, I've got others that really impress me a lot more. Do you know what I mean? The standouts by far for me is the Vanish Primer, the bronzer, the blush, the cream blush, the satin lipsticks, the lip gloss, the setting spray, and the brow gels. They're like the products that I would instantly like run out and grab again. I really like the Vanish Stick foundation. I really do. I can see how that wouldn't be for everyone though, but for me, I really do enjoy it. The skin tint is lovely, especially if you like a skin tint and you really like that super light coverage, you will really like that product. But the Ambient Soft Glow foundation, honestly, I just, I don't super recommend that one. I think that you can get a better product that has that same intentions with other brands. Like I would personally recommend the YSL All Hours foundation over that one. But overall, I'm like really happy with, you know, all of the products that I brought into my collection from the brand. I'm really happy with like deep diving into the brand. I really haven't tried a hell of a lot from it. And like now I'm excited to kind of keep my eyes on their new releases, like moving forward. So yeah, overall, I'm, I'm pretty satisfied. I'm pretty satisfied. I wouldn't say it's like one of these brands that I'm like, this is my favorite brand ever, but it is a pretty solid, decent brand with some really, really good gems in there. Yeah. That's how I feel about it. Okay, let me know your thoughts down below. What do you think of Hourglass? Is it one of your faves? Not so much. You know, all of that jazz. Let me know in the comments down below. And if you've made it this far, you know you're an absolute legend because this would have been a long one. So thank you so, so much. I truly, truly appreciate you. And I hope you have the most amazing day wherever you are in the world. And I will see you next time. Bye.